Now, if you are looking for a surprise weapon against the move 1 e5, then you came to the right place. Because in today's lecture, I am going to show you one of the surprising gambit which has been rarely played but yet very tricky over the board. After e4 and e5, white should start with d4 and after pawn takes d4, here white has tried various responses such as c3 leads to the goring gambit, queen captures d4 leads to the center game where knight to f3 enter into the keys risky gambit. However, there is a fourth big time alternative and that is this won the Lassa gambit starting with bishop to c4. So if you are a bishop's opening player, this might also interest you. Now as you can see, I have highlighted by the arrows, black has plenty of choices. We will start with the least popular choice to the most frequent one. The first move I want to consider is bishop to c5, which I can't tell you how many people has fallen into my blitz games, as now white get by force winning sequence, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, queen to h5 check, g6, and now white regain the piece back with queen capture c5, whereupon not only black king has been completely open on the king side, but already there is an ongoing pressure on the d-pawn, which altogether gives white a great advantage. The second move I want to consider is bishop to b4 check. So all this bishop moves has some huge problems because after c3, Pawn takes c3 and b takes c3. Can you believe the only move for the black here is to play queen to f6 to hold on to his game? Because if the black square bishop moves anywhere, then once again the game has been lost at the opening stage. For example, if bishop to e5, then we have this nice tactic queen to d5 winning the piece as white is threatening double, queen takes f7 mate and queen captures a5, which unfortunately black cannot defend both of them. Well, the same story goes if he goes on the e7 square, because after queen to d5, not so surprising, black cannot defend on f7, as the only move knight to h6 completely fails due to bishop takes h6 castle and bishop to e3, white obtain a whole piece at just 8th move of the game. Isn't that amazing? Okay, what about the last move, bishop to c5? And I think you already see now, yep, what we are up to is bishop takes f7, king takes f7, queen check, g6 and queen capture c5. Again and again, we have the scenario where black king has been misplaced. White is getting his material back. And practically speaking, it is only white who is having all the fun in this line. Last but not least, what to do against the move queen to f6. And at first sight, this looks obvious choice except one problem that white has a nasty exchange sack here starting with c captures b4. The point is we get some forcing moves. Queen takes a1, queen to b3 attacking on f7. So queen to f6 is more or less forced. And now I'm going to introduce a new move here and that is knight to e2 which is so far never has been played in any game. And 
I just like to show you how dangerous this move is as I have won a very quick game against a 2200 plus rated opponent. My opponent continue with some obvious moves. Knight to e7, planning to castle. I continue with bishop to b2, attacking the queen. Queen goes to the g6 square, whereupon I simply castle. After the natural move, castle, I think black is clearly lost here, as white has very simple attack, knight to f4. Queen to h6 has been played. But after queen to g3, black has some serious ongoing issue on the g7 square. The matter of fact is, in the game, my opponent made a decisive mistake by playing knight to c6, as that allow this nice knight to h4 move, which create a triple attack on g7. And just like my opponent, if you think that g6 solve all the problem, then you're absolutely wrong, as after just one move, queen to c3 and black is completely lost. The third move I want to consider is c5, which is in fact played frequently at below 2000. And against this, even though white has plenty of choices, I am going to recommend this straightforward move, c3, which sets up some cunning tricks. First, let me show you probably the most high profile trick in this line, where if black capture this pawn, believe it or not, but white is winning on just fifth move of the game. Yup, you heard it right. Look at next reply. Queen to b3, attacking on f7. Queen to e7, defending as well as attacking on e4. But after knight to c3, no matter how waver black wriggles, he is going to lose this game. For example, if he continue with knight to c6, planning to go knight to e5, here we can unleash this nasty move, bishop to f4, whereupon if black indeed goes with knight to e5, then we can really surprise him with queen to c2. The point is, after knight takes c4, white has this decisive blow, knight to d5, where he has a double threat, number one, not only attacking the queen, but looking at the juicy c7 square, and number two, very obvious, queen capture c4. In fact, there is a game in the FIDE database, which finished very quickly, black played queen to d8, white indeed give this check, and after king to e7, Yup, simple move, you take the knight and threatening the rook so that if black foolishly play the move rook to b8, then after knight to d5 check, king to e8 and bishop captures b8. Yet another short game where white obtain a piece at just 13th move of the game. So guys, watch out for this nice high profile trap if your opponent continue with knight to c6. The second choice, knight to f6, is not good either as we can simply continue with bishop to g5, pin down this knight and threatening knight to d5, something that can be turned out horrible for the black camp. For example, I can show you a model game between two 2500 rated opponents where black continue with knight to c6. So his idea is that he's threatening the move knight to a5 as well as knight to d5 is not a threat right now as black can always play the move queen captures e4. Okay, in the game, white played the most accurate sequence, 
castle on the queen's side, now threatening the move knight to d5. And indeed, after knight to a5, white just given up the bishop pair by playing queen to a4. But even after this, the position remained so much venomous for the black. Well, he tried queen to e6, but unfortunately, this runs straight away into the move knight to d5. And now black has two choices, but neither of them give any satisfaction result. For example, knight captures d5 is a big time blunder, as after e captures d5, queen has to stop rook to e1. And the only way to do it is by playing queen to e5. But this doesn't hold the ground as after knight to f3, queen is forced to go away so that we can deliver this nasty check, which in fact yet again finish the game just within the opening stage. So knight captures d5 is not a good choice by the black camp. In the game, black tried the move bishop to d6, but this completely fails after the next nice sequence by white. Bishop takes f6, pawn takes f6, and now queen to c3, whereupon he has a very simple threat of capturing on f6 square. And mind you, bishop to e5 doesn't work here, as white has two good choices. He can take on c5, regaining his material back. But the even stronger choice is you go queen to d2 with the follow-up of queen to h6. And in all of this instance, it is white who is clearly on the driving seat. Now, instead of capturing on c3, the another popular choice here for the black is knight to c6, defending the d4 pawn, whereupon my recommendation is you continue with knight to f3. Now, if your opponent continue here with knight to f6, then we can certainly capture on d4 and the position will transpose into the Max Lang and the Morphe attack territory, which I have covered in detail in my Dirty Chess Tricks 6th and the 7th episode. So the second most popular choice here is D captures C3. But after this, we can simply take this pawn. And it doesn't matter how waver black plays. Our planning is very simple. We want to play queen to B3, followed up with castle on the king side, which already gives wide a huge attack. Let's follow the database for a while. For example, the most popular choice here is d6. We continue with queen to b3. Queen to e7 is a bad choice as somewhere down the line, white can unleash knight to d5 as we have seen in earlier games. So queen to d7 is the natural choice. But after this, the simple plan, you play bishop to f4 and pressurize the d6 pawn. Okay, black can even play knight to a5 and get the bishop pair. But after queen to b5, I think still white obtain a decent advantage. You cannot take the queen here because after bishop takes, bishop to d7, bishop takes d7, king takes d7 and the move castle on the queen side. Not only white is going to get his material back, but black king is stuck in the center where white can get all sorts of fun attack in the slide. So no, queen captures b5 is a bad choice by the black camp. The correct move here is knight takes c4, but even after this, white can simply recapture this piece. And black sum up the natural moves doesn't solve the problem in this position. For example, knight to f6, you pressurize this backward pawn with rook to d1, 
and bishop to e7 straightforwardly met with e5 where there is a nice trick exists if your opponent continue with knight to h5 just look at the follow up guys white plays bishop to e3 so now there is an indeed pressure of d6 pawn and engine's base choice queen to e6 completely fails as after knight to d5 and the move castle white can play a move which force the instant resignation can you find it congratulations if you see the move g4 <laughs> what a move as it by force winning the piece because this knight cannot go anywhere and mind you queen cannot capture this g4 pawn as white has knight captures e7 winning the piece the third popular choice by the black camp is d6 but personally i don't like this move as black is already limiting his dark square bishop and although white has plenty of choices here i am going to recommend this attacking move c3 so if now black doesn't capture this pawn then we get a very good center so by far the popular choice is capturing this pawn whereupon i think you already guess white's next move yup queen to b3 attacking on up seven queen to e7 now you take this pawn threatening knight to d5 and after knight to f6 we can continue with knight to f3 if knight captures e4 then white can simply castle and expose the e file by his rook so that's not a good choice and if you look at the database here by far the most popular move is knight to c6 which i am afraid leads to a disaster after white castle and would you believe all of the top choices by black miserably fail from here onwards for example if bishop to e6 then we can take on e6 and if black capture with either of the piece we can take on b7 and emerge with an extra piece so that's not a good choice here what about the second move g6 well this time around white also has some natural attacking moves bishop to g5 pinning down the knight bishop to g7 and now knight to d5 complete the attacking route as after the forcing sequence queen to d8 e5 knight takes e5 knight takes e5 pawn takes e5 and look at this final silent but the killer move rook to d1 <laughs> and even though black sees that the knight discovery is going to come unfortunately he cannot do anything about it last but not least what happens if instead of g6 your opponent continue with the move knight to a5 typical tactic getting the bishop pair where this time around this doesn't work here because white has a nasty high profile trap here starting with queen to a4 check okay knight to c6 has been forced and although database suggest knight to d5 is white's top choice i am going to improve upon this and suggest a move which wins on the spot can you spot it congratulations if you find the move knight to g5 which again creates some forcing moves bishop to e6 knight takes e6 and after f takes e6 
the beauty about the modern chess engine because i think the next stunning move only engine can find it look at this guys bishop to a6 boom <laughs> amazing obviously black cannot play rook to b8 as after bishop captures b7 he is definitely going to lose a piece as rook to b7 miserably fails due to queen captures c6 and black is losing the rook so that is right out of the equation but many of you think that hang on isn't black can castle on the queen side and get rid of all the threats well yup he can accept one problem that after white's next reply white instantly get the winning position you are a genius if you see the move queen capture c6 a beautiful move on his own right and the big time point is after black regain his piece back white get this tremendous attacking position starting with queen captures a6 king to b8 and bishop to e3 where the position looks so scary for the black and if you think that hold on c5 can hold all the ground then think twice as after this can opener b4 white's heavy artillery come into the picture and not so surprising some games in the database finished very quickly from here on Now before we leave I like to quickly point out what you should do against the two black knight moves first move knight to c6 you have two options number 1 you can go with the move c3 and enter into the goring gambit territory which I have covered in detail in my attacking chess gambit third episode and the second big time alternative is you can continue with knight to f3 and enter into the scotch gambit territory whereupon against the two black major choices number 1 bishop to c5 once again i'll give you two choices you can castle and enter into the max lang territory or else you can play the move knight to g5 and enter into the serrated gambit which i have covered in some sort of detail in my chess trap 46th episode so kindly check it out this dangerous gambit if you really want to surprise your opponent okay what about the second big alternative knight to f6 and against this once again i am suggesting two good attacking alternative here if you really like the fried liver or the lolly attack then you can go ahead with the move knight to g5 here and apart from it the second alternative is you can castle on the king side and depending on the black respawn you can enter into the max lang and the morphy attack territory which i have shown in my dirty chess tricks 6th and the 7th episode finally what to do against the move knight to f6 and i'm sure if you have followed my dirty chess tricks playlist then you will not find it difficult to find white's next reply yup knight to f3 and we have entered into the uroso gambit territory where black has plenty of choices but each of these moves i have covered in detail in my dirty chess tricks 14th and 15th episode do watch out if you haven't so far and you will be amazed how quickly 
wide get aggressive and attacking winning positions. That's it guys. I am sure after watching this video, now you are confident enough to include this line in your Rapruta. Remember, after this three rare bishop to c4 move, not only you have chance of finish your opponent very quickly in the opening stage if you played some careless moves, but even some of the strong and solid moves, white attacking ideas cannot be denied. And certainly, this line should be used as a complete surprise weapon in the tournament practice. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.